Now let's bring you some stories for the morning and President John Dramani Mahama has charged Ghanaians to live above personal sentiments, religious affiliations, tribal lines and partisan politics to ensure that we continue to preserve the freedom and peace Ghana is currently enjoying. And he was speaking at the 59th Independence Anniversary Parade uh, where he also indicated Ghana's independence was a model for the whole of Africa uh, some 59 years ago. He encouraged all to join hands to maintain the enviable freedom and peace the country is currently enjoying. Now, review of the, the event was characterized by spectacular displays from the security services during the March past. The stands were full to capacity and most latecomers had no option but to watch the parade from behind the locked gates. But for those who could not endure missing the interesting displays ongoing at the main square, they found other alternatives. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta was a special guest of honor. He pledged his commitment to fostering the bilateral relationships between the two countries. He emphasized the need to counter terrorism attacks on the continent by all means. Recent history has shocked the world by a series of terrorist attacks in different capitals and regions. It cannot be that terrorist attacks become the norm rather than the exception. As we continue to cooperate and heighten our counter-terrorism efforts, let us remind ourselves of the challenges we must confront and those which we must overcome if we are to preserve the gains of our independence and the values of democracy. Peace and security plays a key role in the economic growth and sustainable development of both our countries and the African continent as a whole. Thus, we must come together to defeat the enemy that is threatening our people's way of life. President John Dramani Mahama charged all to guard the hard-won freedom by the country's forebearers, which he said has translated into the current peace Ghana is enjoying. The successes and failures of this nation belong to all of us, because this country is for all of us, and we can each choose to play a role, no matter how seemingly minor, in moving our dear nation Ghana forward. We must invest ourselves not only in the achievements our nation has chalked, but also in the challenges, because each of us is the face of Ghana. When Kofi Annan was named Secretary General of the United Nations, the world knew him as a Ghanaian, the first black African to ever hold that title. And we all took pride in our native son. When we see Farida Bedwe being featured in the international media, or we learn that Taye Selassie's novel Ghana Must Go is on the New York Times bestseller list, we sit up straight and we think to ourselves, yes, that person is one of us. That person is a Ghanaian. We do not stop to think about what political party they are associated with. We do not stop to think what their ethnic origin is. We do not stop to think what region of the country they are from or which religion they practice. We celebrate them as Ghanaian because they are the face of Ghana. And all of Africa claims them as well. When Wole Shoinka won the Nobel Prize for Literature, he belonged to all of Africa, not just Nigeria. And when Lupita Nyong'o won the Academy Award, she was holding that Oscar for all of Africa, not just for Kenya. And so when 14-year-old Abraham Atta won the Independent Spirit Award, he was not just representing his country, he was being applauded by all of Africa. Though I'm sure we applauded the loudest because he's one of us and he's a face of our proud country, Ghana. For some dignitaries, Ghana has come far in development, but needs to do more to catch up with the rest of the world.
59 years is uh, a long time when you count the years, but when you see through uh, civilization's prism, it's a very short time, and this is a young democracy that is thriving, facing all challenges, and eventually still making progress and ensuring development. So congratulations to everybody. It is good that our president should improve things for us. Now we thank God the electricity problem is getting better. Uh, and this 2016, November 7th, is our election year. The most important thing, especially our youth, they should be very careful. They shouldn't allow the devil to use them. Ghana belongs to all of us. The event was graced by Ghana's surviving ex-presidents, President John Ejekum Kufour and President Jerry John Rawlings. Flag bearers and leadership of some political parties were also present. Meanwhile, flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, is also expressing disappointment at the failure of the president to address issues bordering on the current economic situation in his Independence Day commemoration speech. Nanado believes President Mahama should have touched on some of the critical issues as an indication that he's working towards fixing them. Let's look forward. Let's take stock of where we are now and look forward as to the arrangements that we can make internally that would allow us to emerge from difficulties and economic backwardness so that we can also join the prosperous nations of the world. It is to that extent where I was somewhat disappointed in the president's address that he made no mention of our domestic situation whatsoever. And I think all of us are aware that we're going through very, let me put it as politely as possible, very challenging times in Ghana, difficulties of employment for the vast majority of our youth our businesses, our, I would have hoped that this would have been an opportunity for him to have addressed the nation and told them that yes, I have, yes, I'm aware of the difficulties that we have, but these are the things that I'm calling upon all of us to get together to do to address these challenges. Unfortunately, the speech was completely silent about it, and to, to that extent, I was disappointed in the speech. And he has been proposing some possible solutions to the issues he feels are crumbling the economy. Among the things we should prioritize as a country, what should we be looking at really? We have to find a way to get, strengthen our economy because that is the only way we can get jobs to our young people. We have to strengthen our economy, grow our economy, put in policies that will allow the economy of Ghana to grow and expand. The Asian countries grew at 10% rates of growth for a decade. That took them out of poverty. That's what we need to have here. And we need to have, at the helm of affairs in Ghana, people who have a program to do exactly that. Thank you very much. Okay. And the leader of the Ghana Freedom Party, Ikria Donko, has been thanking God for an incident-free Independence Day commemoration. Well, according to Ikria Donko, she's convinced that President Mahama is God-sent because he's undertaken projects that are gradually putting Ghana at par with the rest of the world. Thank God for the 59th anniversary. Since Kwame Kume's time, this celebration has always been held. Children have always read about it, and the more it is celebrated, the more the children will better understand the essence of the program. Thank God it did not rain today and nothing else happened. I am very happy. Is this the independence you have always wished for? This is exactly what I wanted. Everyone, including children, are learning from this experience. 
everyone can read a book just like the children and understand. So it is very good the day is being celebrated. I am happy dignitaries have even come to support us. It didn't rain and nothing happened. There was no incident. This makes me very happy. President Mahama was chosen by God. Look at the Kwame Nkrumah circle. If you go there, you think you are in abroad. I've been to America before and I've seen what's happening and what he's also doing here. So I am saying that is God. If you are looking for God and you don't find him, that is him. The moment he's done, I'll be the next person. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. The Asante Hini Otunfosi to the second says he will not sit idle and allow his subjects to be driven off their land in Agogo and Tafo. Well, he's called for calm and patience as he finds a solution to the two lingering conflicts in both jurisdictions. Uh, he's been speaking of his financial support for ex-president Kufo's government, the bank and public perception. He's in bed with the National Democratic Congress. Here's Erastus Asari Donko's report. The youth of Agogo and members of the Asante Youth Association have threatened to boycott today's Independence Day celebration over the invasion and harassment by a nomadic Fulani herdsmen. Wearing red and black, residents of Tafo presented petitions to Otunfo upon arrival to intervene in giving them justice in recent Tafo violence. The king acknowledged petitions submitted to him. He, however, assured Asanteman he will not allow his subjects to be killed and driven from their own land. He was speaking at a reception organized by the Asante Professionals Club in Kumasi. <laughs> I saw people holding placards at the airport saying they are being killed in Agogo and Tafo, he says. I told them to hold on until I've been briefed, but I want my subjects to know that I will not sit down for my children and grandchildren to be killed and driven from their own land at Agogo and Tafo. The king was also not happy with perception that he is in bed with the NDC government. He noted he has supported all ruling governments, including financial support for President Kufo during his tenure. Jerry Rollins initially did not even like me, but we patched up and worked together. President Kufo came. We worked together. I even supported his government financially. President Mills took over. We worked together. Now it's President Muhammad's turn, and we are working together. I stand for sentiment and gun. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Love FM, Kumasi. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this too, because the board chairman of the Achimota Senior High School here in Accra is blaming the inaction of the police and other state institutions in cracking down on encroachers for, or of their lands and what they term to be illegal. The school has over the years been battling with encroachments uh, gradually closing in on the school's property. <laughs> 
Among the many individuals and groups encroaching on the school's land are displaced residents of Old Fadama who were evicted last year, churches and private developers. Board chair of the school, Samuel Apiampofo, in his keynote address at the school's 89th anniversary celebration, wants the practice halted. In the last 20 years or so, there has been a planned and vicious invasion of the lands of this school. Despite a clear court judgment in favor of the school, the illegal seizures still continue. The law enforcement institutions of the state, the lawyers of the bar, the judges of the bench, and the police seem unable to assist the school. It is even rumored that all Achimotans are among these illegal land raiders. So today, I challenge every old Achimotan, especially the lawyers, to make a significant contribution, whether in cash or in kind, to the effort to repair the invasion of the property and integrity of the school. The headmistress of the school on her part was worried the growing student population is making teaching difficult for the teachers. This school is now having about 3,000 students almost. And so uh, we have a class of uh, 56 and above, getting to 60. And it's a challenge because to teach students very well, you need that personal contact with the child, giving more exercises and marking consistently. But if the size, uh, class size is large, there's not much that can be done. I mean, you work hard, but you may not get as good a quality of a product as you would wish to have. Some former students who were present included former president and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Rollins, and former executive director of the Minerals Commission, Joyce Ayi. I would tell them to take the Achimota ethos very seriously because life is not about ourselves, our personal lives. Life is about impacting society and the kind of education we get here will help us to impact our generation. The occasion was also used to mark the 50th anniversary celebration of the 1966 and 67 year group. Mm. School you went to Ashmota? No. Mm. I, I went to Zion College. Yeah, I wish that I went to Ashmota. Really? Serious Bourgeois yeah. School, man. You can see Joy Zaye, Rollins, Kunedu. <laughs> on and on. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, and um, uh, is that all? Yeah, that's it for the news. Uh, but we'll come back. There's more headlines to look at in the newspapers, and hopefully, uh, we can uh, do a round of other <laughs> news portals here on the show. Mm. You're watching the AM show. Okay, and just following that very last story, just the last mm. school you went to nah. at Chimota. <laughs> <laughs> For all of you watching us, at what's wrong? I mean, oh, you guys watching us uh, from Fumbisi, Zebela, uh, Kintampo areas in Accra, Dan mm. and you went to Odogono in those places. So they let you know. Let us know. What's up? 0568 uh, That's for our platform on WhatsApp. Uh, we're very much happy to get a couple of them. We just want to project your school as well. No, be only Achimotao. Stay with us here on the show. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.